Hello and welcome to Dish Talk. I am your host, Dan Donahue. Caitlin Clark and breaking the rules a little. Please subscribe to the channel before I get started. Now, let's get into it. Uh, I wanted to talk about Caitlin Clark for a very specific reason. I don't follow basketball very closely. Um, I don't follow Iowa very closely, which is the school she plays for, except for the fact that they gave a Slipknot. I do follow Slipknot very closely. So if you count Slipknot as Iowa, which you should, I follow Iowa very closely. Uh, Caitlin Clark is a college basketball player, uh, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, woman's college basketball player ever. Some would say the greatest college basketball player ever due to the fact that she just broke the scoring record. Now, I'm not going to get in the weeds about that. That's not what's important. I don't care about that. This is what's important. This is why Caitlin Clark is so interesting to me. I walked into an Armenian coffee shop that I go to pretty often, and they were playing the Iowa State game on the TV. Do you know what a magnitudinal shift, I don't know if that's a word, but we're going to stick with it. You know what I mean. Don't act like you don't. Do you know what a magnitudinal Damn it, I messed up my fake word. Magnitudinal shift has to happen for an Armenian coffee shop to be playing women's basketball. This coffee shop generally plays like bear fights on the TV. So, Caitlin Clark has made a huge, huge impact, right? Culturally, she has made a huge, huge impact. And... I kind of wanted to understand why, because I don't think that it's just that she's uh, a great basketball player, which she is. She seems to have had a bigger effect than that. And so I, I looked into it, and I looked into some of her older videos. I'm not a Caitlin Clark expert, so if you have anything to add in the comments with what I'm saying, please do. What I've gathered is she is not just a very great player. She is also a very fiery player. And some people would say a very... Uh, arrogant player. Some people would say she goes out of her way to break the general decorum of basketball. And they see that as a bad thing. People see Caitlin Clark getting fired up and getting angry and being, you know, sometimes even maybe a little bit of a brat on the court. And people see that as a negative thing. And if you do, I really do mean this, I don't know if you fully understand sports. You might understand statistics, you might understand players, but I don't think you understand the fact that sports is, in tandem with being a competition, a form of entertainment. And this is what women's sports needs. I want you to listen to me very closely. It is good for kids to have the choir boy, choir girl type role models. The Steph Currys, right? Even, uh, even the LeBron James, even though LeBron James is a polarizing figure, he doesn't have a lot of on or off the court scandals. I mean, he, he does definitely react to calls quite a bit. Um, I think that we've had enough women in sports who are... By the book, stony, forward, like, role models. We need some women psychos in sports. Not to say Caitlin Clark is that, but to the extent that she does show emotion on the court, to the extent that she does get a little angry on the court, we need that. You want to know why Ronda Rousey was such a big name in women's MMA? It wasn't because every press conference she was going up there like, man, I hope... I hope my opponent does the best she can. You need some people like that in sports. I love people like that in sports. I love the humble people. But I also love the people that stir the pot. Okay? We finally have a generational, multi-faceted, high-impact player from women's basketball. And what a gift from the Lord above she also has a personality on the court. And you're going to sit here and say that is a negative? I think you are out of your mind. 
to think that is it. I think we need more. We need a woman Dennis Rodman. That's what we need. We need a woman in, in women's basketball who will go to a dictatorship with a nose ring. Because that's what gives sports the extra oomph that makes people interested in watching them. Do you not understand that? Do you not understand the reason why Dennis Rodman remains to be a cultural touchstone and icon while almost no one says he's the greatest basketball player of all time? He is generally not in the conversation of the top, you know, 25 greatest basketball players of all time. But he wore a wedding dress publicly in the 90s, I think, or at very most early 2000s. We need that in women's bat. I want Caitlin Clark to dress up like Mel Gibson in Braveheart and to do a press conference with her face painted. This is what sports needs. And by the way, in interviews, I do really like Caitlin Clark uh, because she doesn't blink a lot. And that's a great sign when it comes to a athlete that has a little something extra under the engine, she doesn't blink a lot. That's good. But, and by the way, it's great if you're humble. It's great if you're, you know, just kind of a demure, like, listen, I just want both teams to do good. And, and also, another thing about Caitlin Clark, there was, there was a big scandal, or not scandal, but like people got fired up because her dad was kind of yelling at her from uh, from the sideline and Caitlin, I don't think she was yelling back at him, but he was clearly being like, calm down, settled. And all the comments were like, see, even her dad wants to rein her in. Even her dad wants to wrangle her in, blah, blah, blah. Do you not think her dad is also a little bit of a psycho? If you look at that man for a second, he looks like a Wall Street guy that would throw a phone through a door. I'm not, I don't know what his job is, but that's the vibe you get from this guy. If you look at that tape, you go, that, that's a man, that's a man who has done some yay in his life. Okay? And the people around him are not happy that he's doing it. That's what, and by the way, that's not a terrible thing. I mean, I, I hope he's not throwing phones through the doors, but that's the dad of a champion. Do you understand me? It's not the guy sitting by the sideline like, oh boy, I hope my daughter does good. No, no, that's not the guy. That's not, the, that's the guy to breed a healthy, adjusted, well-mannered, well-centered person, but that is not the guy who raises a champion. And that guy raised a champion because he seems to be a little bit crazy. Now, how do we apply this to our lives? How do we how do we look at Caitlin Clark, look at her success, look at the impact that she's made, and go, how can I apply this to my life? Well, I, I actually do have a thought about this. What Caitlin Clark does, and what I think you can do, is she does follow the rules. She is clearly a very uh, wise person, but she's okay with showing some emotion when something matters to her. Now, you can sit here and go, oh, it's too much emotion she shows. She's too fired up. She's too disrespectful. Well, I'll tell you this. If you're going through your day and you have things that you're passionate about, things that you're excitable about, things that really matter to you, I don't think it's out of the question sometimes for you to, in certain spots, Get fired up about that. Listen, I do stand-up comedy, which is uh, a lot easier than basketball in every way. It's a lot simpler than basketball in every way, and you don't have to be as talented to do it. But I, I've, I've gotten in my car after going to the comedy store, and I have yelled in my car. And if someone were to walk by my car after those sets, they would go, Oh, man, Dan is crazy. Dan's nuts. Dan's a bit of a psycho. There's a difference between doing that too much and doing it where it's hurting and affecting other people. Now, if, 
if I were to be at the comedy store, have a bad set, and then punch a guy, well, we don't want to do that now, do we? That's not what I'm advocating for. But a little bit of fire in your life, a little bit of passion in your life, a little bit of stakes. What Caitlin Clark is doing is she is so showing that there are stakes to what she is doing. And if you think that the things that she does on the court are too much, well, guess what? You don't want women's sports to succeed. That's it. Because men's sports forever have had big, huge, psychotic personalities. They've had big, huge, angry, fierce, fired up guys. And that, that is exactly what Caitlin Clark is. And it's good for the sport. We need to have a... Do you know what the malice in the palace is? If you don't, it's a very, very crazy story. And this, I'm not advocating for this. But it's withstood the test of time as one of the most interesting moments in sports histories. The uh, Pistons, I believe, um, got into a fight with the, an entire fan base. They went into the crowd at an arena and started beating people up. And I think, uh, I think Ron Artest was a part of that. I think Rodman might have been a part of that. It was crazy. It was dark. It was uh, a dark moment in basketball. And guess what? We need Caitlin Clark to do that. <laughs> we need a woman's malice in the palace, Okay. It gets people interested in the game. It's a little bit of sportsmanship. It's a little bit of showmanship. Am I being serious? No, but to a degree, I think that we need to allow, and, and this goes for men's sports too, you need to allow pageantry. You need, and you want to know why these organizations don't like it? You want to know why these organizations don't like the touchdown celebrations? And I, I really do mean this. It's not because of decorum, and it's not because it slows down the game. No, it's because they don't want players to become bigger than the league. So they try to stifle the players. They try to keep the players quiet. They try to keep the players towing the company line. And guess what? I don't like that. I like when the players are bigger than the league. I like when the players are bigger than life. That's what I like. And it's always been good for the sport itself, but these leagues just can't understand that. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's some a very human element when it comes to these very high-pressure, very uh, high-stakes games for somebody like Caitlin Clark to get a little bit passionate and fired up. In the same way, I also like the Stoic people, the Ray Allens of basketball. The people who are kind of, you need both. You want to know why? Because the world has both. I'm in my car screaming and yelling after I have a bad set. I have friends who are way funnier than me who will have a wait, like who will have a bad, I won't say a worse set. I don't know if that's possible for them anymore, but they'll have a bad set and they'll be like, oh yeah, that's, that's part of comedy. That's fine. I'll move on. You need both kinds of people in the world. It's fun. Have a little, sports are fun. Do you understand that it's a I mean, it's a very high-pressure game, it's a very involved game, it's a very fun game, but it is a game, and we need to remember that. So, uh, I, I guess the end of this thesis is, Caitlin Clark is good, passion is good, as long as you're not, you know, hitting a referee, or going into the stands, and uh, you should maybe be a little bit fired up about the things you do. If you look at the things Caitlin Clark does, and you go, oh, this is crazy, she's so bad for da-da-da, maybe you need a little more passion in your life. Maybe you need to understand that when there are stakes involved in the game, you get a little bit heated and a little fired up. And sometimes, yeah, in a way where you do have to apologize afterwards, in a way where you do look back on it and you go, oh, that was maybe a little much. But you know what that means? It means you have emotional content in what you're doing. And that's a good thing. So um, I'm glad that Caitlin Clark is bringing emotion to the state of Iowa. Uh, that's my little rant and ramble for the day. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I appreciate you so much. Have a good one.